Hi, today I would like to tell you a bit about Paw Pals, an amazing new application created by Team Six. To tell you about Paw Pals, we have to first start by telling you about the amazing opportunity that was presented to us by our teammate, Emily, who's a dog owner. Now, no presentation about Paw Pals would be complete without including the basis of our app's inspiration, our furry friends. Being a dog owner can be amazing. Whether you have a dog for emotional support, to help with a disability, or just to be a fur baby, dogs can be incredibly important. While they can put a smile on anyone's face, they're also a big responsibility. Being a responsible dog owner involves a large investment of time and money, which sadly results in some people putting off finding their furry friends for years. There are so many things dog owners have to consider to take care of their pups. If you've ever had a dog, I'm sure you know how important socialization is. In case you don't know, according to the American Veterinary Medical Association, socialization is the process of preparing a dog or cat to enjoy interactions and be comfortable with other animals, people, places, and activities. Now, according to the Coastal Pet Products Incorporation, the benefits of socializing your dog include building the dog's confidence, which makes them less fearful, preventing reactivity, providing freedom, and giving owners peace of mind. While socializing your dogs is obviously very important, it's not always easy. There are a number of difficulties associated with socialization. One hard part of socializing your dog is that it's very expensive and difficult to do. Doggy daycares, dog boarding, dog training, and dog walking all cost money. Even if you have multiple dogs, despite them having each other, you still want to socialize them with other people and dogs. Another difficulty in dealing with logistics. In this age of technology, there are hundreds of businesses that you could employ to socialize your dogs. There are chat rooms, Facebook groups, friend groups, organizations, trainers, classes, dog walkers, daycares, boarding homes, and more. Once you do the research to pick your platform, you then have to deal with the logistics of scheduling, setting up payment, and more. Trying to socialize your dog can also be time consuming. Past picking that platform like I just talked about, you have to fit it into your schedule. You have to research the people, the location, the safety, the reliability, and more. Not to mention, much of the time, you have to be present for that socialization. Lastly, it's difficult finding a good match for your dog. When socializing, you want your dog to be surrounded by other well-socialized dogs and people, not dogs that are themselves highly reactive. You also want them to be with people and in places that you trust, especially if you can't be there yourself. At the end of the day, you're doing this for your four-legged friend, so you want them to enjoy it as well. That's why we at Paw Pals have come up with a solution. I want you to imagine an app that bridges the gap between this important part of your dog's health, not to mention your sanity, and the difficulties you have to face to socialize your dog. Through the app, you get a less expensive and personalized alternative for socializing your furry friend. You are connected with a community of like-minded dog owners. Not to mention, the app is free for use and includes the opportunity to earn rewards. In your application, you can host dogs, have your own dogs be hosted, and earn rewards through our token system. Using Paw Pals will enable you to make sure that your dogs can be socialized even when you're not present, such as when you're at work. We want you to imagine our application as a mixture of Uber and Tinder for your dog socialization needs. You can host a socialization, schedule a socialization, or both. You're able to match with other dogs and dog owners that meet your individual's dog's personality and socialization needs. Now, there are three main roles people play when utilizing our app. The host, the guest, and the platform manager, though many of our users will only care about and use the first two roles. As a host, you'll be able to host other dogs in your home or local park, be paid for your service, and earn in-app rewards in the form of tokens. As a guest, 
Our term for a dog owner looking to socialize their dog who does not want to host the socialization. You'll be matched with a host that fits your specific socialization needs. You'll be able to pay the host varying rates for the interaction, and for every socialization, as well as other in-app in interactions, you'll have the opportunity to earn tokens. Our platform managers will be on the app as well. They'll be monitoring community feedback and providing customer support to ensure that you love the Paw Pals community just as much as we do. They'll also be reviewing user accounts and matches to make sure that they're appropriate and meet all of your needs. And lastly, they'll have access to the log of resolved customer concerns so that no matter what manager you're talking to, they'll be able to familiarize themselves with you and your specific needs. Now, I'm sure by this point you're wondering, what are tokens and how do I use them? The in-app tokens can be saved up and spent on a myriad of things, including discounted and free socialization and dog products from partnering pet supply companies for your furry friend. Because we understand that dog owners have enough expenses to deal with, we offer a free version of the app for everyone to use. If you enjoy the experience, you can choose to upgrade to the premium version for less advertisements, though since all of our advertisements will be for local doggy daycares, dog-friendly restaurants, and other services, you just might want to keep them. Now that we've told you a bit about the amazing opportunity Paw Pals has to help people just like you, we would love to actually show you a working prototype of our application. The following video will show you what you would see in all three user roles, as well as give you a good idea of how you would use different parts of our application in these roles. Welcome to the homepage of our site. The simple design allows users to clearly see our company branding and motto, as well as the navigation options at the top of the screen. From here, you can navigate to know who we are, register as a user, and contact us. And if you're a platform manager, a type of Paw Pal employee, you can log in. As you scroll further down the homepage, as you can see, you can see the stat count of the number of hosts, guests, places, and reviews the web app has had. Moving on, the About Us tab educates users by providing them with insights into our app. the problem that we're trying to solve, and a number of other things, such as the different roles you would play on the site. As you go to the register tab, you're taken to a sign up form, which takes your data and then stores it in a database. This form also lets you pick if you want to be a host, a guest, or both. You'll also be able to enter payment information into the system as well, but you do that after you've created your account in a payments tab that we'll show you later. As you can see here, the example video is showing um, just an example person. So they're able to put in their name at the top as well as their email. Then you would also insert information like your phone number, your dog's name, the breed of your dog, and your dog's weight. Now, as we continue to put in information, you can see that at the very bottom, there's also the list of questions that I talked about where you can select what user roles you want to have in this app, whether you want to host socializations, whether you want your dog to be hosted or a combination of both that you can then schedule later. In addition to creating the password, um, it's also important to note that if you already have an account, um, there's the link at the bottom that says already a manager. We also have it so that if you forget your password later down the road, you're able to recover it in the login page. So after signing up, you're given a confirmation message on the screen saying you've registered successfully. And to log in, you have been connected. It asks for your email and password to log yourself back into the app. And just like I mentioned a moment ago, it has a forgot password button just in case you forgot and it'll be emailed back to you.
Now, after successfully logging in for non-platform managers, you'll be able to choose if you want your dog to be hosted, to host a play date, which is the term we use for socializations, and access your messages in your inbox. Playdates scheduled for guests or hosts are based on the matches from our database from the information that you provide us. After matches are created, they're reviewed by platform managers, and these users will receive messages in that messaging tab. Now, as you can see here, the messaging tab um, doesn't actually have anything in it yet since we are playing the role of the first user on the app in this example video. So I'm going to go on to show you a bit about those other tabs. Like I said, there's no messages at the moment, so we're going to go in to Be Hosted, which is the guest tab to show you how it works. When you click Be Hosted, the app asks you to re-enter the dog's information for a separate table in our database that's accessible by platform managers. This takes information we already asked, and you're also able to add more things like your dog's energy levels to really personalize that matching. Um, after filling out the sign-up sheet, then you can go on to Be Hosted. You can also communicate any special needs to the host after you're matched with them and the host is approved by the platform managers. This is a key feature for the authenticity of our app so that any critical information about you and your dog doesn't get shared with anyone unless they're a host qualified by both the database as well as a platform manager. As you can see, your profile has been successfully created once you fill out the form and submit. Now, if we want to have our dog be hosted or host another dog, you can say host a play date. You can choose the date and time as well as how many dogs you can host and where you would like to host, such as a local park or your own home. So after you've selected all of that and then you click sign up, it'll take you to more information. and that profile for hosting was successfully created. Now, here's a brief look of what messages in your inbox would look like. You would have just the number of messages listed. Now we wanna show you the payment screen, which you can access once you've logged in. Here you can pay for the products that we plan to introduce in association with a pet brand, and you'll be able to make payments through a card for the products that'll be launched as part of that updated phase of the website. You can also earn tokens as we just discussed prior and we'll talk about more in a bit, and they would be accessible through the payment tab. Now the screen that we just showed a second ago also demonstrates the platform manager tab, where you can review database matches, message customers to provide customer service, and resolve any disputes or complaints submitted by customers. This brings us to the end of that walkthrough for the initial version of Paw Pals, but I'd love to quickly show you a look at the IDE we used for building this application. So here's the sneak peek of what it took to actually design everything you just saw. While there's not enough time to dive deep into the depths of every keyword, loop, class, and library, I'll give you a brief overview. The first module is the idex.html on the top, which is the literal front end of the application. It has multiple headers, link styles, and CSS files. In this module, we created a class in containers, which is a concept in object-oriented programming for every bar on the website. To summarize, what's happening in that module is just defining a class for entities and listing its dimensions. Then we have our second module, which is ranking.sql. Everything about our databases is in here. It holds all the database entries and lists the table and the lists of tables. What the user inputs in the signup sheets is listed and predefined here, and it also has limits for both character and integer values. So to go back real quick, um, there's another module in there. So the app.py is actually the bridge between the front end and the back end of our web application. It includes Python SQL libraries and PIP libraries. This can be considered as a coding window or an API, which fetches entries from the back end and then displays them on the front end, which was the prior video of what the user would actually be seeing. So now I'm gonna move on 
to tell you a bit more about our application and what we see on the back end. That would be the database. We wouldn't want you guys to leave without hearing about it. So this here is a local PHP host that simulates an environment to compile and debug. Here to your left, you have the structures of the file created at the back end. We have tables and table entries on the right from the overall signup tab, but that's not the signup tab from the guests and hosts after you've created your account. For demonstration purposes, we filled the signup tab with five bot users just so the database has some content for you to look at here. In addition, you can actually drop and truncate all of the entries at once if you plan on doing any housekeeping for the application, such as what platform managers might need in the future once more users get on the app. Now, I'd love to tell you a bit about the usability and accessibility of our application. Due to the nature and timing of the creation of our final application, we couldn't run it through um, any of the online usability checkers just because of how we coded it as well as time constraints. But I can still briefly explain our approach to provide users with the high usability access that we wanted to provide. We designed our website with high clarity in mind. The open space and clearly labeled tabs enable users to quickly understand and navigate the website. We also designed our website with high recognition in mind. We wanted users to be able to intuitively understand how to navigate our page and recognize where things are. As a result, we put our tabs clearly at the top of our page, which is common on websites. And we started with the page users will start on the home page as being the first tab. We then have the page of about us um, to give them more information on the company about different roles and things like that. This is then followed by the registration or login link tab. And then finally, the tab for contacting the company. If you are a platform manager in the functioning version of the app that would eventually be launched, you would also see that platform manager tab that we've shown in this example account. Um, this format where it's ending with kind of like current employees, where it has contacting towards the end, and just the general order of the tabs we talked about is common across many company websites. We also wanted our website to appear credible and relevant. We did this by not having any information that could confuse our users. The space we designed was supposed to be minimalistic, clear, and on brand for our company. The logo is a paw. Um, you can see that the images in most of the background is uh, the background of a park or someone's backyard, such as where these uh, play dates or socializations would be occurring. And the images throughout the application that you saw in some of the prior videos were always of dogs and very on brand. All of the information that we showed you, whether it was the short surveys, the contact page, or the about us, uh, were very short and simple, containing only the information that was necessary to understand the concept and how to use the app. Because of this, we also made sure to provide lines of communication through that messaging board um, in order for any potential customers or current customers to voice and get clarification on points of confusion from platform managers. Now on to accessibility. Like I said, due to the nature of our application, the way that we coded it and our time constraints, we were unable to implement all of the features we'd originally planned for. Despite that, we wanted to depict what we had planned for and what we would include in our next app update. These accessibility profiles include the accessibility profile to the left, uh, language options, as well as color adjustment for people who might be colorblind. Since so much of our app does have uh, just those different images in it. So now we're going to briefly discuss the infrastructure we used in the program and that was briefly showed earlier. So for the hardware, this includes um, kind of the specs of the hardware that our users would be running the application on and it would be compatible with. Since it's a web app, it will run functionally only on a personal computer. The software we used um, actually includes Python for the IDE. Uh, we also used HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for creating the front end of the application that was in those first videos you saw that they actually interact with. And we used MySQL for the creation of that backend with the database. 
Moving on to the data that that database contains and that we collect throughout the process. Um, I know that we talked about it before and showed it, but I'll go into it a bit more. So once again, we asked them to sign up and provide that personal data and information such as their phone number and email and things like that. After signing up with the user login, they're then able to choose between two roles as well as if they want to do both, whether they want to be a host or a guest. Then users that are guests and hosts provide dog information in the guest section and hosts provide their availability status by putting those days which they could host. Depending on the time and date, as well as other characteristics, hosts are then matched with guests, um, just looking at compatibility, um, as well as a number of other factors. Data is entered in at four points throughout this entire process. You have the initial sign up, and then you have, if you want to be a host, there's the survey for information every time you want to host. If you want to be a guest, there's that point of information. And then there's also that payment screen that we showed you for if you want to pay for those socializations as well as any other uh, in-app purchases. Moving on to the databases, I'm just going to really briefly mention that we used MySQL relational databases. It created a table for guests assigning attributes and attribute types and character limits and data gets stored in the database and is accessible by platform managers so they can access it down the line. So onto our network, this slide is essentially talking about linking the front end and the back end together. All of the software apps interact with data, so they need some sort of database management system. Some programming languages have modules to interact with the database. For example, Java Database Connectivity, JDBC, some come with third-party packages like Angular JavaScript, uh, but for Popels, we actually use the built-in Python SQL libraries to ensure the connectivity throughout the app. So now moving on to the monetization strategy. Uh, now that we've talked about those basics of our app, we want to tell you about how it can actually generate profit. We have a number of monetization strategies that we want to talk about. Um, these include utilizing both free and paid versions of our app, as well as hosting in-app advertisements. We're also going to be generating money through in-app purchases and using a partnership model with local pet stores. At Paw Pals, we want everyone to be able to use our service. As such, we offer the free version of our app, and this consists of in-app advertisements for local pet services. Uh, these range from pet supply stores to pet-friendly restaurants to other pet services such as grooming and dog walking. For individuals who want to do away with those ads, we'll offer, also offer a paid version that provides a clean, ad-free experience such as that depicted in the videos from earlier in this. For all guests who pay to have their pets hosted, Paw Pals will receive a small fee as part of the payment, and then the rest of that payment goes towards the host for the socialization. The fee that the guest pays varies depending on the location, the time and length of the socialization, the number of dogs present, and if the owner themselves are going to be present or if they're not going to be, such as if they were at work. Finally, Paw Pals plans to use a partnership model with partnering stores. This is kind of where tokens come in. So tokens that are earned in app, whether it's from hosting a dog, having your dog be hosted, or just using the app daily, can be redeemed at our partnering store in the form of dog supplies. Not only does this benefit longtime users of the app, but it generates new customers for a partner store that are in their target market and gives them access to these potentially new customers. Now that we've provided you with an overview of PayPal, PayPal's, the value we offer, how we work, how we're profitable, our team is now going to talk about some of the lessons we've learned throughout this project as a whole. Alrighty, thanks everyone for tuning in to the first part of our presentation where you got to learn about our app, everything we've done in the software and what we're really trying to do in creating this program and the software. So now we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of a deeper dive through a hosted discussion and ask a lot of the team members about some of the lessons we learned and really get a deeper dive on the actual development process. So we're going to go ahead and share my screen here so we can get into the discussion. So we're going to go into an insight of Paw Pals, which is our company, as you have just learned. 
And the first question we'd like to go ahead and tackle is working as a team. I'd like to really dive into what worked, what didn't work, what were some of the challenges for everyone kind of cooperating and working together to get this product and project really completed. So I think that we pretty effectively stayed on the same page with one another throughout the entire process. We were able to communicate what the requirements were of the project and stay up to date on those. We were able to uh, determine what our roles would be within the specific parts of the project and uh, stay up to date with those as well. I also think that we effectively held each other accountable for our different roles within the project. I think we did a lot of uh, uh, quality control on each other to make sure that uh, our assignments that we were completing were as best as we could do within the given circumstances. And uh, yeah, I think I think overall the team experience itself was was generally pro positive. Well, overall, I do agree with Scott that the team experience is generally positive. There are some little kinks and problems that we encounter along the way, most most um, most dominantly with the idealization phase of the application itself. We initially imagined a train notification system because we genuinely do not have any ideas on what app we should develop for this project. But as the um, weeks rolled on and we met with each other and coordinated on ideas, we eventually we eventually reached the idea of Paw Pals. So yes, ideal, I, idealizing that app itself was indeed a significant challenge. Thanks, Alan. That was a great point to bring up, actually, with the whole pivot that we had to make working as a team. I thought everybody handled um, the big switch very well because we had to make, like a, like you mentioned, a last minute change into the actual you know, entire foundation of our project. So getting that switch and really performing and pulling it off somewhat effectively, given the time crunch, was a, a really important thing. And I think a, a positive in the end for show how we how well we work together as a team. So moving on here, we got a specific question for Sid, who is our developer here, and talking about actually developing the system of the app. So what was the real difficulty of the you know custom app design process that you had to go through? So as Alvin and Scott mentioned, one of the greatest challenges for us working in team was the pivot that we had to make in the very early and the initial stage of the course. Um, Having said that, developing the system was in a challenge itself because this was the first system we're in. Um, I was working with something that I was not familiar of because I come from India and we don't have dog socialization there. So for me to understand what dog socialization is, that was itself a great challenge. But my team was super kind in helping me understand what screens we require, what users we require, what um, uh, database we're going to be looking at. And I think... Um, your the challenge was to integrate the front end with the back end because designing a front end is easy you know you just use html you just use any scripting language and you design the front end designing a database is also kind of easy you just create a table you enter the attributes and you design it but the main part here is linking the front end with the back end which is kind of tricky and uh, the system that we're looking at when we designed does this part with the help of angular js which is angular javascript that merges the front end with the back end and displays the results Awesome. Thanks, Sid. So I got a follow up here for you actually talking about the system develop as well. What is the actual strategy you chose to go with to kind of reach that conclusion? Because I'm sure it's not very easy, the whole planning process and stuff like that. Sure. So uh, in class, we would talk about different uh, development method methodologies. The one that we used in this app development was the RAD model, which is the rapid app development model. This model is specifically used for small scale projects. And given the time frame we had, this was the best model of choice because the very first stage in this model was requirement planning. So we all as a team, we came together, we gathered all the information about the app. What are the basic preliminary information that a user would enter in when he's signing into the app? And then the second part was, of course, the de development and the construction part, because you don't have time to go on and dive deep into the requirement gathering analysis of the app, given the time frame of this course and the program, we had to dive in into the construction of the app. And then the very last part was deployment of the app. Like we have finished the construction, we have gathered the requirements, we have obtained the feedback, which is also iterative. The last thing remains is the deployment of this app to the customers and the consumers and to take feedback from them and maybe improve the version of this app in the updated app that we plan to launch. Awesome. Thank you, Sid. That was perfectly answered um, and really gave us a better understanding of what it kind of went through in the process that we took to really get that app functional or, you know, at a working manner and get it really up and running. 
Now, a really another important part of the actual whole app development is the usability and the accessibility. And uh, really figuring out and making sure that we are catered towards all users is, you know, critical. So I'll go ahead and ask Rebecca, because I believe she was the main uh, person who was in charge of that specific area, if you'd like to go ahead and answer here. Yeah, so I know that we talked a lot in class and as a team about usability and accessibility, about how in general, if you were to have unlimited time and unlimited budget, we looked at all of the things that you could explore and do. For accessibility, there's things like um, for images, making sure that there's descriptions for everything, whether it's the logo for our company, Paw Pals, which is the, paw, the little paw, um, and just all of the logos that are used throughout the website. Um, there's also a number of things for usability that you should consider. I know one example in class was uh, that Amazon and some other companies really popularized the placement of certain icons on website applications to be, for example, in the top right or top left corner. Uh, so just making sure that your app and your website is designed so that the user can really easily understand and intuitively uh, navigate their way around. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a learning curve with any new application and software, which is why things like app walkthroughs exist. But you still want there to be a high level of usability to where they don't just go and open the page and go, I have no clue where anything is, where to start, or things like that. So we really did a lot of research. We sat down, we looked into all of those aspects, and we decided what we could and could not implement, just given the time frame of our project especially since we had to make that pivot so close a couple weeks ago. Um, when it comes to usability, at the moment, we looked into a number of specific places to where we could actually plug in the URL for our website application into a usability checker. So that would really give us that feedback on where we're standing and our score for usability and maybe reanalyze and go, okay, what can I still do to make it a little bit more useful in the time frame that we have? Um, we looked at a number of alternatives for that. And I believe the one that we ended up picking and we're going with is the access scan uh, that that website um, it's instant so it and it's also free which is a nice benefit um, just given the time constraints and the budget for this project um, but that's currently what we're kind of looking at for accessibility and usability for paw pals so we can jump on in here past to the next question to really figure out a more of a you know fun question talking about the lessons we learned like we said the knowledge we gained we found a good, we got a really good understanding of the app and the development process through Sid and Rebecca telling us all the steps we took to make sure that this was you know a really usable and a um, we really explained the effort that we put in to really produce this product so if anyone could go back, back to the beginning of the course what is something that we could you know tell ourselves I think something that I would really want to tell myself at the beginning of this is whenever you're coming up with an idea for an app to sit down and really do that front end design as you come up with your idea. Um, I think that this is something that we tried to do, but maybe didn't do it as in depth as we should. So when we started developing the app and doing that front end development, there were a lot of kind of moments where we stopped and we were like, oh, wait, actually, we need to make this different. Oh, wait, we need to put this here. And so I think integrating both of those processes, the ideation as well as the design would be really helpful when coming up with an app. And I think that's something that I would definitely want to do differently. I'd also like to add that I feel like we should have spent more time generating more ideas and contemplating like the feasibility of different ideas. Because I know we basically came up with one idea and we, we're all pretty pretty confident that that we would be able to implement it but it just ended up not happening the way we thought it would and so just having something that we could have fallen back on more quickly uh would have been helpful That's in addition to that, that I, oh go ahead Alan. in addition to that i would like to add to myself that don't worry about pivoting there's always a second chance when you're um, trying to develop an app if if you if your first iteration of the application does not work out in your favor, it's okay to pivot. Just take a breather, and and do it again. Awesome, awesome, Alvin. So yeah, that's a big part too. Um, you know, sometimes when we have a really good idea, it's the, exactly that. It's a great idea, but it may not necessarily be the best product or the best app that you're trying to develop. So there's there's definitely a bridge and a gap between ideation and actually trying to create something. So that's definitely a big thing that I would tell you know myself as well going back. So going back to Sid here, we're going to retouch on a little bit of the technological aspect. We're going to ask how did technology you know help or hurt you throughout you know the vision and the process of creating it and just trying to make this, you know, really come to life. Yes. So going back to one of the lectures with Dr. Gamillion, as he said, when you're developing an application, the number one thing or the number one aspect that you look at is 
how can you solve the problem that you're trying to build an application with? So number one thing is that for us, it was how can we solve this problem wherein we could make like two dogs meet, kind of socialize and get to know each other because it's a very important aspect here in America. So technology wise, I think <clears throat> the amount of depth or the amount of um, uh, things that we have covered in Dr. Gamillion's class regarding SQL, non-relational databases really helped a lot because um, we designed and used different queries and we learned a lot about queries, which did help us in the technological part. Because one of the aspects I remember designing the databases is use the usage of union all query, which actually picks and identifies different breeds of dog together and then displays it as the matches. And then you get a notification that, oh, that you have, you've got a match, you can meet. And then providing the user and the host owner with several aspects of as to where you're available to meet. You can either meet at a different park or you can either meet at your house or your backyard, anywhere. So I think that technological impact and the beauty of this class, wherein Dr. Gamillion teaching us how to design and develop an app in eight weeks is um, it's incredible and which I enjoy the most. And I think it has really helped me and my team to come up with an idea to sit together, brainstorm, and then bringing the app to reality. Awesome, Sid, thank you for that. Now we're gonna go back to the group here as general, whoever feels uh, you know, compelled to answer this is, is there anything you really found that inspired a you know, potentially new passion or uh, really fueled you or taught you something you didn't know before starting this? While we admittedly did not gain any new passions while developing this project, we learned that, and I'm pretty sure I speak for the team here, we div we um, use existing passions that we have to, to develop the app in very productive ways. I would definitely agree with that, Alvin. For example, um, I know, I'm, I'm sure you guys know at this point as well that uh, I am pretty passionate about Canva and I really enjoyed like our marketing and value creation classes and just the idea of kind of creating a brand with everything that you do. And I really enjoyed incorporating that with um, helping with like the front end design. I know that when Sid was starting with actually doing the coding and creating things is I actually coordinated with him to make sure that we had like a color palette that we had a logo that the icons that we used um, not only were like visually appealing and fit with our branding but like made sense for what we were trying to get them to indicate um, even though like there's descriptions and things like that that they'd be able to figure out through stuff um, just really being able to use canva and my knowledge for that to bring both the presentation to life and incorporate with like the front end design with emily and sid um, that was kind of fun to be able to take that thing that i'm passionate about and it apply it to this project so Awesome. Thanks, you guys. So we're going to go ahead and go back to the whole group here. We're going to have everybody, I believe, answer this one here. What was one of the biggest challenges that we faced as a team? So I think if you haven't figured it out by now, our biggest challenge, which is definitely having to pivot with our idea. So we worked on a different idea for a good portion of this block. And then at the last assignment had to basically throw all of that out and pivot to something new. Uh, so this was really hard, just pivoting in general, but now we were working on redoing all of the work that we did at the beginning of the block with a new idea in a much shorter amount of time. And it greatly reduced the amount of time that we could work on uh, you know, developing the app and different ideas for it. So the pivot, as well as the time crunch that came with the pivot after that. <laughs> awesome, thanks, Emily. Now, very quickly here, let's get a, a little bit of input from everybody here to their favorite part of this project. We don't want to run too long on time here. So just a couple, you know, short sentences, you don't have to say a lot, just everybody go around and basically I'll go ahead and start us off here if we want, since I'm already speaking. Uh, I would definitely say the ideation part. Um, I love kind of being a planner and trying to come up with those create, creative ideas and, you know, pushing myself to think outside the box and think of new, you know, fun ways to bring something to life. I definitely agree with um, honor in ide uh, in like ideation of the app, but I think my favorite part is defining the user roles for this Paw Pals application, like finding out which person is like using the app, which one, which what problem are we solving. I think it's um, a very use um, a useful exercise. 
I know for myself, I already mentioned like how I was excited about using Canva, but past that, I was also really enjoying like the ideation part, just like you were talking about, but it wasn't even the intellectual exercise. I'm not even a dog owner yet, like Emily, or well, like I've had dogs growing up, but it was just really exciting to create something or create a small version of something that I feel like would be impactful and really solve that issue. Because I know for myself, if this were like a fully functioning website that I could subscribe to right now, I'd be like, advertising this personally on social media and I'd be using it and definitely paying for it because it just it's such a cool idea and I'm really glad we landed on it um, for me, I'm sorry okay for me the ideation part was not the most exciting part because I am a computer engineer I have coded all my life I've coded for four years so the development part was not something that was my favorite part but here's what my favorite part is to understand a different system here in America. Like I didn't know that dog socialization was a thing until my team members said that, oh, it's actually a thing in America. And then I was like, okay, because the previous idea that we were working on was also not very, in, I mean, not very known to me. So I was like, okay, fine. These are some new brilliant ideas that I was not known of. So I was like, okay, if you're pivoting, I am at least get to getting to hearing some brilliant, awesome ideas that I was unaware of. So um, getting to know all these brilliant ideas was definitely one of the most favorite parts that I enjoyed. For me personally, I think there's kind of a thrill in learning a large amount of information in such a short time. I think we were only like six weeks through class by the time we started working on the final aspect of our project. And then implementing all of that information into something that can be like tangibly seen. And you can see how the journey uh evolves over time into something that's actually usable in the end. I think that's really interesting and it's been my favorite part of the of the whole project. I think mine um, was being able to see that like I can have an idea and be capable of like actually doing something with it. You know, I, I really enjoy ideation coming up with, you know, cool new ideas, but I never really thought that I could actually do something with it, especially something like develop an app because I'm not very good with technology at all whatsoever. So it was just really cool to and empowering to see that that is something that I could do. And if in the future I have an idea that I think is really cool, I might be able to actually put that into practice rather than just saying it's a cool idea and moving on. Awesome, everyone. Thank you for that input there. Last question we have here very quickly to not take up too much time. Uh, I have one actually specifically for Rebecca saying, how would you describe this project to people that you may encounter in the future? So if I were to describe this project, at least in a professional setting, whether it was someone you were meeting at work or a future potential employer or career fair or something like that, I would definitely take the approach of kind of doing an explanation similar to what we learned to do for IBE in this program. Of This was a really amazing opportunity to get some hands-on learning and experience to where we could implement, just like Scott was talking about, these concepts that we were learning very rapidly um, and in some parts in depth and exposure to things like we hadn't learned before or like MySQL and just some of those concepts, especially for the individuals in the program who didn't have that hands-on technology background and really get the hands-on experience of walking through the entire process of developing an app. We did the project ideation. We had to actually go through user roles, monetization strategies, uh, really look at how you would design a front end, how you need to connect that to the back end, uh, the different parts of databases, and just get the hands-on experience in a short frame period period of time to be successful um, and that you're really able to learn a lot about different parts of that entire process through it as well. Awesome. Thanks, Rebecca. So that wraps up our little discussion here. I hope everyone was able to get a greater insight into how we all, you know, spent how we spent our time developing this project and really where our inspiration came from. And, you know, the lessons learned are important here, I'd say. And uh, thank you, everyone, for watching this little discussion. Howdy. So now just to wrap up our presentation, we'll briefly show some of the links we used for those sources and an appendix. So here are those two sources that we referenced at the very beginning when talking about the value of our project, as well as the opportunity that we were addressing. Here is our appendix, which contains some hand-drawn screen mockups. 
This is initially what we were doing to take that ideation and transport it and transform it into a front end design. It shows the login and sign up pages, how we thought we wanted our homepage to look, as well as some things like the sign up page with having a bar to where you can manually move it for the energy level of your dog. Um, and just those different tabs like being hosted as a guest and what we wanted our platform managers to be dealing with. And so with that, I'd now like to say thank you for watching our presentation.